It's the time of the year when we all wait with bated breath for new video game related deliveries. Getting a new system or accessory at launch to join in with the hype is important to us gamers, yet it doesn't always go that way. Does it FedEx? Does it Hermes? DPD, YRC, DHL, UPS, USPS and everyone else. Yep, it's time for I, DJ Slope and I, Guru Larry, to tell you the tale of four deliveries that went completely bust, ruining the birthdays, Christmases and some random spoiled brats weekday. Who's to blame? You decide as we tell you the story of four valuable consoles and games that got lost slash stolen in the mail. Number four. Let's start off with something very topical. The PlayStation 5. It's no surprise that the PlayStation 5 is selling out on a global scale. Demand is so incredibly high that, as predicted, if you were to buy two PlayStation 5s, you could sell one for pretty much double the price, resulting in one free PlayStation 5. Not bad, right? Well, actually, it is pretty bad. Pretty terrible, in fact, as video gaming gets more and more popular. Not only have Sony got to make even more systems in order to meet demand, they have to pretty much double it because old Del Boy wants one for next to nothing. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. eBay has now become the biggest supplier of PlayStation 5s, and that sucks. And because of the scarcity of this system, reports of delivery drivers pulling up, realising what they've got in the back of the van, and driving off, have become rampant. It's obvious what's inside these boxes, and a consistent number of reports have been made to Amazon UK since the console's release, who put out a statement regarding the order issue after the website Push Square reached out for comment. We're all about making our customers happy, and that hasn't happened for a small proportion of these orders. We're really sorry about that, and are investigating exactly what's happened. We're reaching out to every customer who's had a problem and made us aware so we can put it right. Anyone who's had an issue with any order can contact our customer services team for help. So, in other words, tough luck. Haha, <laughs> you're not even down for the second wave of systems. You have to start all over again. Still, it's not as bad as the people that did have their packages arrive, as quite a few people found something completely random in the box instead. Fancy getting a new foot massager or an air dryer? A new Nerf gun or some more cat food? All pretty awesome presents for the holidays, as I'm sure you will all agree. Also, if you are still going without, just think yourself lucky that you're not the guy whose wife sold his PlayStation 5 because he lied to her, claiming that it was an air purifier. <laughs> I bet she didn't even get a good profit for it, did she? Number 3 This is Bayou, a C++ programmer with over 20 years experience most known for his work in the emulation scene. Taking his name from the lead protagonist of the Bahamut Lagoon video game, Bayou was completely obsessed with video game preservation and translations of some of Japan's more well-known JRPGs. This eventually led to the release of the emulator Hygen and led to one of the most ambitious emulation projects ever put forward by a single hobbyist developer. And that was to buy every single Super Nintendo game in every single region so that he can dump and document them all himself to preserve as much as he could. Now the guy had a Patreon, which was a good thing as gaining every single game had already cost him upwards of $30,000, and he did do it, completing the American set of 721 box games and dumping them, then selling the entire collection on eBay for $22,900, and again with the help of his Patreons, managed to get the entire Japanese set only a few years later. 
Finally, with only the European set left to dump, Bayou had become even more well known within emulation circles, and thankfully, someone from Germany who had a complete PAL set was going to make his life a whole lot easier by sending him 100 or so games at a time for Bio to dump. The first 100 went well, so our unnamed German friend decided to send a few more of the valuable ones in the second package, which was then lost by USPS. Bayou was distraught. The package included such classics as Vampire Kiss, Incantation, Hagen, Mega Man 7, X, X2, X3, and loads more. Months and months fell off the calendar with no package in sight. USPS had absolutely no idea where the $10,000 valued package had gone, which left him no choice but to make the story of the missing package public in order to hopefully get some funds and repay that generous donator. However, upon doing so, every single news site even slightly interested in this sort of thing reported on it and it actually became pretty big news. This caught the attention of USPS even more, who were getting seriously slated for their no effort approach to finding the missing package, and what do you know? They found it, just before it went up for auction. Needless to say, Bayou made sure to add insurance on the next package and continued on his video game preservation path. Number two. Sometimes, sometimes it's just sitting there, tempting you to go and pick it up. Nobody's watching, and when they do realize it's gone, it'll be too late. Nobody will know that it's you. In this instance, that something was a crate of 144 Xbox 360s. Yep, Gene Samedi here, as you can see by his mugshot, is yet another guy who didn't get away with it. Before going to jail, Gene was a lorry driver, and when he dropped off his latest shipment, a crate of 144 360s were left on his truck, and he drove away. Does this make it a two-person job? Uh, probably, it definitely seems to be that way. Anyway, after the shipment was taken, accidentally or not, the distribution center, not sure where the cargo went, decided to log all of the MAC addresses for the system, and sure enough, several of those systems turned up when the unknowing eventual gamers decided to go online. <laughs> after tracking the general locations of these online Xboxes and looking at CCTV footage that shows Gene getting out of his lorry and actually checking that they were in there before driving off, he went into hiding. Police did eventually catch him, though, at John F. Kennedy Airport, where he was attempting to make a run for it. And after being arrested, he ended up in jail until his hearing the following year with a $75,000 bail, all because of a bunch of Xboxes. <coughs> Number one. This is the number three Pokemon Trainer card. One of the rarest and expensive cards in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. Yes, I know it's not completely video game related. Look, do you want variety or not? Anyway, as I was saying, Trainer number three, not exactly on the levels of the Pikachu Illustrated card that went for $195,000 was a card that was given to the third place winner of a Japanese Pokemon tournament called the Super Secret Battle. It is believed that only seven exist of first, second and the third place cards illustrated by Hideki Kazama and the translated text reads, The Pokemon card game official tournament's champion is recognized here and this honor is praised. By presenting this card, you may gain preferential entry into the secret super battle. Yep, not only is it as rare and hard to get as one of these cards can possibly be, but it can also be used as a kinda all access pass to all future super secret Pokemon trading card events. In other words, if you haven't got it sitting in a shoebox in your attic, don't even bother looking. So anyway, 
This incredibly rare and incredibly valuable card ended up selling on eBay for $60,000 in August of 2018. Thankfully, the seller and buyer had the sense to insure the small package for as much money as they could. That being $50,000 via USPS. This package would then go to a drop and ship in New York, which is pretty common for overseas deliveries to the States. And it was never heard of again. Still, thank God they put that $50,000 worth of insurance on this bad boy. Right? <laughs> no. Because the drop and shop in New York signed for the package, well, that was the end of USPS's involvement with this delivery. Somewhere between the two shipping companies, that one small package with a $50,000 insurance sticker on it simply disappeared. Now, obviously, the easy go-to theory is to say that someone simply took what was a very small yet incredibly expensive labelled package for themselves in order to sell it. And if that is the case, our little thieving friend is stuck. You can't actually sell this. It's so incredibly unique that if someone did, it would be picked up instantly by the community and that person would be found guilty. Private investigators, a reward put forward by the seller to anyone who has any information regarding its whereabouts, have come up fruitless in the search for this missing Pokemon card. Because if someone did take this, which they probably did, they are now sitting on one of the most expensive, and at the same time, least expensive and useless pieces of card to anyone outside of the game that has now become so sought after that it's also incriminating. I think it's safe to say that this card, which ironically is probably worth even more now due to all the media coverage, no longer exists. Burn, burn, burn. Fire, fire. Hello you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified, and be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now!